What's up guys, I'm J-Man, and today let's talk about one of the most iconic 80s movies about teen angst, The Breakfast Club. Written and directed by John Hughes, the film became one of the most grounded and memorable depictions of teen adolescence to ever come out, and was even selected for preservation in 2016 by the U.S. National Film Registry for being culturally and historically significant. Now there is one burning question that people have talked about for years, something that's even asked in the movie but is never definitively answered. What did happen on Monday? They all have their own guesses and theories about it, but it's one of those things that is left up in the air for the audience to figure out. So what was it? Did they forget about that day in detention and just go on being their normal selves, or did they actually stay friends after that? Well, in my opinion, yes they did. But there's more to it than that, though. This is... So let's start at the very beginning and then work our way up. At the start of the film, they each begin the day as very different people. The nerd, the jock, the rebel, the princess, and the recluse. Yes, you could argue that they are each just high school stereotypes, particularly for the time, but you could also say that they each represent someone that anyone in the audience can relate to. I personally always related to Bender, Brian, and Allison's characters. I've always wanted to be a bit of a rebel, and I kind of thought of myself as kind of a weirdo like Allison. I also suffer from depression like Brian does. At the beginning of the film, they each have their own unique personalities that obviously clash several times, but at the same time, they also have some similarities that they share. I've always thought of it as kind of an American Beauty type of film, in that from a distance, they all seem pretty generic and stereotypical, but once you get to know them, you realize that they're actually real people with real problems. In their case, the similarities that they have is that they can't stand their parents, and they live in fear of becoming them. Even the teachers give them problems too. Notice that they constantly bicker when they're by themselves, but when Principal Vernon is around, they suddenly act protective of each other, even if it's just a little bit. In fact, Carl the janitor represents this very type of theme as well. The students all look at him as basically a nobody who just cleans the school, but they realize that he's actually a clever guy who does a lot more for the school than they thought. The reason the five of them are in detention in the first place is because of their parents as well, albeit indirectly. Brian is there because he's pressured by his parents to be an A student, and when he embarrassingly failed a class, he got depressed and tried to destroy a school project with a flare gun. Andrew is there because he wanted to impress his dad and his friends by assaulting another student. Bender pulled a fire alarm, which is really just him being himself, but he lives in an abusive household, so maybe he just needs any excuse to get away from his parents. Claire skipped class to go shopping because she feels like her parents don't care about her so much as they just use her to spite each other, so maybe she just needed a place to get away and spend money to make herself feel better. And Allison has no reason to be there. She just feels ignored by her parents, which makes her feel unloved, which is why she's so lonely and even steals stuff to basically show off when she can. Now the whole group therapy scene, which is arguably the best scene in the whole movie, this is where they display their true emotions with each other and show why they are the way they are, something that they wouldn't get to do anywhere else, not even with their parents or friends. Here's the key moment though. When Brian asks them what will happen to them on Monday, the question itself is never really answered. He says he considers all of them to be his friends, and even Andrew kind of agrees with him. But Claire kind of thinks that this will all mean nothing, and it'll all just go back to the way things were. Now, you could argue that maybe the question is never meant to be answered, because it's supposed to ask the audience, what would you do on Monday if you were one of these kids? Just like it says in the song, will you call my name, or will you walk on by? However, Brian himself says that he will never mistreat them in any way or ignore them at all, and I really think that's the key, because in a big way, Brian is really the heart of the group. He's the one who's always trying to calm everyone down, relate to all of them, and has the most innocence of them all. And what's more interesting is that Bender, who's arguably the worst of the group, he even kind of agrees that it's real shitty to be bad to someone for the sake of being bad. The second best scene is the moment right after that, where they're all dancing together. Not just because it's a fun and silly scene, but also because this is the moment where they finally become the Breakfast Club. 
Here they are, blasting loud music, not caring if they get caught, free from all the adults and pressure of society and just enjoying being teenagers, turning this place, which was their proverbial prison, into a place of escape. Moreover, they all go through some kind of physical change. Claire gives Bender one of her earrings, and he actually wears it. Brian has a little more confidence in himself, especially after he writes the letter to Vernon. Andrew lets Allison take his jacket patch, and Allison lets Claire make her up and look all pretty. Now, this particular part has actually been the subject of controversy, calling Allison a sellout since the ways in which she makes herself look weren't necessarily affectations of the world, it was really just how she wanted to look. Well, it's actually quite the opposite. Just because Claire did her up once, that doesn't mean that that's how she's going to look from now on. It's really just meant to be a bonding moment between her and Claire. The fact that Allison let her do it for her just shows how much they've grown as friends. Same with all of them. They started the movie as individuals, but they end the movie as equals. Which is why I think not only did they stay friends on Monday, but they would also occasionally look for ways to spend Saturday in detention again. To actually be the breakfast club. The one place where they're ironically free. So those are my thoughts on The Breakfast Club. Now, do you have any theories on what happened on Monday? Whatever it is, don't be shy, leave a reply. Also, be sure to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and please support me on Patreon. And of course, if you like this video, like, comment, and subscribe to The J-Man. Keep looking deep.